Peace and blessings, y'all. This is Damon K. Jones, and we are going over chapter eight of the strategies of self, your self awareness. Let's get into it. What kind of foods do you eat? You say soul food? Was well, that the food of African people? Slave food. The food that we find most satisfying. The food that we find that sticks to our ribs. The food that we call down home. A food that we learn to eat in the quarters. Yes, yes, yes. Wishing everybody a black tastic day. And today we're going over the chapter eight of the strategies of self. You could get the book on Amazon. And chapter eight is your self awareness. Self awareness is perhaps an essential component of emotional intelligence. We tend to have a wildly inaccurate opinion of ourselves. We can see right through the people we know well, but we have a difficult time seeing through ourselves. We fool ourselves and we're very easy to fool. See how your level of self-awareness affects you and your relationships. Understanding how you come across to others can be very useful in your relationships and how you relate to others. Unless you put a substantial work into examining yourself and your behavior, others don't view you the same way you view yourself. Your partner isn't getting the message you think you're sending. You're a more effective and accurate communicator when you're able to predict how others will perceive your words and actions accurately. Self-awareness provides a foundation for understanding your emotions and yourself. When you lack self-awareness, your perception of reality is off. You can't make effective decisions in your relationship unless you have the foundation of truth to work from. Self-awareness includes awareness of your emotions, including knowing the triggers for your positive and negative emotions. When you know your triggers, you have a lot of control over how you feel. You can set yourself and your relationship up so you can experience pleasant emotions a lot more frequently than negative emotions. It provides a possibility of acting proactively instead of reactively. Having a general awareness of your emotional state allows you to respond more appropriately and intelligently. You'll take fewer things personal and self-awareness provides some healthy distance between you and your emotions. You can view your flaws better you understand that that your reaction to things is something that you do rather than something that you are having thicker skin can be helpful in many relationships when you understand that you sometimes say and do things you don't mean you also understand that others behave similarly your errors will come a tool for positive change. Self-awareness makes your mistakes and misjudgments apparent. You can then use those errors as a way in improving yourself. You can't fix what you don't identify. Self-awareness allows you to place your, place your mistakes. This is great for your relationship. Imagine making a relationship mistake and then becoming better, stronger, and more capable from it. Your partner will be grateful. You're in the present. Self-awareness requires attention. And you're not self-aware when you're, when, you're, when you're daydreaming or otherwise not present in the moment. Emphasize self-awareness keeps you grounded in the present moment. 
this is great for your relationships too. It allows you to notice what's happening with your partner in real time. How self-aware are you? There are very few people that can accurately consider themselves to be self-aware. It takes a lot of attention and work to know yourself and understand how others view you. It's always pleasant to discover more about yourself. Still, it's necessary if you want to have the best relationship possible. Enhancing your ability to self-regulate. Just as you can learn to play tennis, play the piano, you can learn to regulate your emotions and behavior. This is a practical skill that can make your life better in countless ways. We are our own worst enemies, and self-regulation allows you to turn yourself into your greatest ally. Use these activities to learn how to manage your emotions and the result behaviors effectively. Meditation. Meditation is a powerful tool with many excellent benefits. One of the most significant benefits of meditation offers the ability to self-regulate and provide self-awareness. Meditation requires monitoring yourself and returning your attention to a focal point. Meditation helps you notice when your attention strays. This ability extends to detecting when your emotions are getting off the kilter. The ability to maintain and return to a meditative state is excellent practice for bringing your emotions back in line too. There are countless resources for creating meditation practices. Find a few and get started. Just 10 minutes a day of meditating can change your life. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is simply non-judgmental awareness, and mindfulness is a pathway of seeing life as it is. You're staying in the moment and maintain an understanding of your emotional state. It provides a way to observe your emotions without becoming too involved with them. Practice mindfulness by keeping your attention on the simple tasks you perform each day. Showering, folding laundry, driving to work, washing dishes are a few examples. Stay away, stay Stay aware of your thoughts and emotions throughout the day. Get sleep. It's been shown that you're more prone to making poor decisions when you don't get enough sleep. You're also more likely to be impulsive and has less control of your emotions when you don't have enough sleep experiment and determine your sleep requirements. Your relationships are bound to be happy for both of you if you're getting enough sleep. Have a healthy eating lifestyle. Processed foods can be detrimental to your energy levels and ability to focus. Sugar can also be your enemy when you're trying to regulate your thinking and behavior. You're all, you already know what's healthy and what isn't. Getting yourself to eat a healthy diet can enhance the ability to self-regulate. Keep track of the foods that make you feel slow, sluggish, distracted, or negatively affect your mood. Avoid these foods in the future. Exercise regularly. Exercise reduces anxiety and stress and it provides a healthy perspective on life. It's easier to manage yourself when you feel fit, healthy, and relaxed. Build your self-confidence. You think and you act more positively when your self-confidence is high. You're less concerned about what other things And this makes it easier for you to stay true to your values and focus on your goals. When you're not feeling good about yourself, you're more likely to do something silly to make yourself feel better. 
Think positive thoughts. Dress nicely. Be kind. Remember your successes. Stand proud and tall. Build your skills. Achieve small goals. These are all simple things you can do to build your self-confidence. Practice self-soothing. The vast majority of our poor decisions and choices are the result of feeling bad. If you had an effective way to make yourself feel better, you wouldn't have to do something counterproductive to lift your mood. If you learn to self-soothe appropriately, you don't need to rely on food, drugs, alcohol, casual sex as coping mechanisms to your mood. You also be less likely to act out and make impulsive decisions or speak out of tune to somebody. In- investigate non-negative ways to enhance your mood. You might try thinking positive thoughts, exercising, meditation, prayer, visualization, writing in a journal, deep breathing, listening to music, taking a nice bath, or even going for a walk. Just sit with your negative emotions. Notice how you experience them. Where do you feel the feeling in your body? How would you describe it? Now just observe it. In time, it will disappear. When you can self-soothe, you don't have to rely on your partner as much. This creates less strain on your relationship, and you're also less likely to say or do something you regret later. Practice self-discipline. When you know what needs to be done is great, if you can get yourself to do it. Self-discipline is something you, you can learn, and you realize it by forcing yourself to do things you don't particularly want to do. Make a list of a few things you know you should do but don't feel like doing. Pick the easiest thing out of the list to do it. Avoid thinking about how much you don't like doing it Just keep your attention focused on performing the task. Once you completed the task, pat yourself on the back. Give yourself affirmations. Acknowledge that you have self-discipline. You just provided it to yourself in that moment. Self-discipline can be beneficial in any relationship. It decreases the likelihood of cheating, and increases the possibility of having those challenging but necessary conversations. It also allows you to fulfill your promise to your partner, even when you're not in the mood. Self-discipline makes you more reliable person for everyone. Take the long-term perspective. Before opening your mouth, Making any other type of decisions, ask yourself if you're considering the long-term consequences of your options. It can feel good to yell at your partner or give the boss the peace of your mind. And however, that's the short-term perspective. Ask yourself, what is the best decision that you can make for the future? You'll probably be better off if you started looking for for a new job instead of quitting, cussing your boss out, and stopping out the door. A donut tastes excellent now, but a carrot will be better for you in the long term. Those with short-term focuses struggle. Those with long-term focuses thrive. Your relationship will be helped in multiple ways if you take the long-term perspective. When you can manage yourself effectively, you open up a whole new world to yourself. You can accomplish much bigger goals and stop sabotaging yourself and your relationship. This is hard work, but worth the effort. So let's get to it and make it happen.
So thank you, everybody. This is Chapter 8, Your Self-Awareness from the book, The Strategy of Self. And again, you can get it on Amazon. And if you have any questions or you have anything that you want to know about the health mindset, the six, the six pillars of health and wellness, um, the book, The Strategy of Self, or any of my other books, you can, you can email me a question um, on health and wellness, mental clarity, and ask the health mindset at Gmail. Every Thursday, we're going live um, with question Q&A, with question answering every Thursday. So whatever, whatever questions you have, uh, we'll be able, God willing, to answer your questions live on Facebook. If you if you send foolishness, you'll get blocked and you just might get blown up. So if you have any questions, that's the email right there. Ask the health mindset at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you tune in at and and we'll be here, man, every Monday. And now we're gonna start being on Thursday when we have questions and answers. And hopefully people will mail in um, questions and answers. So thank you for watching The Health Mindset. This was Chapter 8 of The Strategies of Self, Your Self-Awareness, Peace and Blessings. Have a blacktastic day. And remember, God is in your vegetables. Peace out. What kind of foods do you eat? You say soul food? Was well, that the food of African people? Slave food. The food that we find most satisfying. The food that we find that sticks to our ribs. The food that we call down home. A food that we learn to eat in the quarters. And yet we dare say that we have escaped slavery. That we have nothing to do with those people back there. That that was back there. When our whole very social life and social relationships our very definition of ourselves as a people, our very attempt to commune with ourselves is mediated by the food of slaves. What kind of God do you worship? Who taught you to praise him? Was this the God you were praying to before you were brought to these shores? Was this the religion you had before you were brought to these shores? How can you then you define yourself, the very essence of yourself and the very essence of your soul and organize the very nature of your life here on earth based on a God handed to us by a slave master?